This week, no residence is safe because you are going to commit crime. This episode of Scam School brought to you by Netflix and GoDaddy. Warning, the following episode may contain eggs, gluten, soy, and crime. Welcome to Scam School, the only show dedicated to social engineering at the bar and on the street. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, and this week I mean it. We're back to hardcore crime because you will go to jail if you abuse what you're about to learn because we're about to find out how to use everyday objects that you have in your house right now to pick locks. All right, finally we get to learn from a true expert. Justin, how you doing? It's good to see you. All right, so we wanted to start off by talking about what kinds of locks are easy to either pick or or bump, or there's a bunch of different ways to open locks, right? Yes. And uh, what are the least safe that people don't realize aren't very secure at all? Just about anything you can buy in a hardware store, Home Depot, any kind of department, Anything under 75 bucks. <laughs> really? Yeah. So pretty much everybody watching, their lock on the front door at home is easy to pick or bust into. Right, and you can have an expensive lock, but it could have an inexpensive cylinder in it, so don't be fooled well, by ex- it. Explain to me that part. Talk to me about the cylinder. How does that, that's the center part of the lock? Yes, that's where you put your key. Okay. And that's what operates the bolt, so you can lock and unlock it. But you can have different brand cylinders with high-end locks. So you might have a high-end, sec- very fancy pants secure lock, but the cylinder's junk, right. and then you can just you can just pop it right mm-hmm. open. Yeah, like for instance, Baldwin is a very uh, exclusive brand, very expensive, and you can have a very inexpensive cylinder in there. Okay. And so be- the lock may be secure, might be a nice lock, nice looking, but it's still very easy to open. Now I've done a little bit of poking around and I learned one way to open these locks, the one we're gonna talk about first. But uh, before we do, I wanna, can you give me an overview? What are the different ways that you could get past a lock like this? Well, there's traditional picking with these kind of pick tools here, which I'm sure everybody's seen on James Bond. Yep. TV, it's pick gun, it's very popular. Um, we can drill them. Just drill very, it straight through? Yeah, very easily. Uh, you can bump key it. Okay, so that, and that's the one I learned about was, was the bump key. So explain to me the principle, because I kind of understand and was able to clumsily mess with it, but what is the principle of how a bump, bump key works? It's actually very simple. You have these keys, and the keys will have spacing and, and depths. This particular one has six cuts on it, and there'll be zero to nine depths. So in bet- from the top to the bottom, it's spaced out in 1500 uh, increment, and it'll be zero to, to nine, which gives you 10. So what they do is they cut all nines on there, which is the deepest, Okay. and these little bumps, when you pull it out about a 16th of an inch, and you, you whack it with something, applying slight turning pressure, the tumblers all get hit at the same time and create and snap it. So this is the lock? This is a, yeah, this is a typical cylinder. Okay. This would be the, the, the housing, which, which in, up in the top chamber would be these springs. Okay. And drivers, which we call top pins. So, and I guess all of the, the brass part here would be up in the cylinder. Be up inside this. All of this uh, silver part would be what, down in inside here? Inside the plug. Okay. The cylinder plug. And so it's only when they're lined up just like you see here, because you can see on the, that key. So you right. put the key in and it pushes all these. And lines them up perfectly even, which creates what we call the shear line. Okay. And allows it to turn, and that's how different combinations work. So, and I guess when you put in a normal key like this, everything gets lined up, and then it holds in that place, and you can turn it open like that. Right. But the difference is with a bump key. A bump key, what you're doing is it's 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 going, it's putting all the tumblers on, which is dropping them all below the shear line. Okay. And when you snap them all simultaneously, it 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 creates a gap. It snaps the bottom, the top pin and the spring and will create a slight gap for Just that for, split, for a split second, second. Right. And, and allows it to, to turn. It's, it's like playing pull. Okay. You know, you, 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 can, you can hit the ball, the ball stands still and the other ball goes flying. Okay. It's the same principle. So in this case, in this case, all of these are getting hit and it's transferring the energy up into the spring so all of these go up just long enough. Just for that fraction of a second because they're spring loaded and, and if you hit it just right, it, it, it'll, it'll create that gap. Dude, that's unreal. That's yeah. unreal. And so we actually have a faux door here. I was going to give it a try and see if I could actually pull off the bump key. Sound good? You got it. 
Now normally this is where we continue our graduate level course in Scamology through the use of Netflix by suggesting another scam or con movie for you to check out at home. But this time I want to turn the tables and ask you guys what are the movies I missed? What is the best con movie that I have not yet brought up? Write me directly at brianrevision3.com and set me straight. But meanwhile, we want to thank Netflix for sponsoring this episode of Scam School. Don't forget that with Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including lots of Blu-ray titles, with free shipping both ways to your home. They've got over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in one day. The plans start from only $4.99, and as a new member, you get a free, no-risk, two-week trial membership. Head on over to www.netflix.com slash scam school. And of course, remember, www is at the beginning, just as important as the scam school at the end to make sure we get credit for the sale. So this is what we put together. Actually, my intern Chad made this. This is the actual lock from my house that we put on a dummy door. And then I went online and I Googled. All I did was Google bump key and I got for like $8 a set of house bump keys. And in fact, I went ahead and I got the expanded one. Now this is what surprised me. The bump keys that they sent, some of them were the type that would go in a house lock, but others of them you had some that I know, I like this box. one is, is a mailbox, mailbox bump key. Right. Mm -hmm. And this guy, what, what would this one be used for? It looks like a padlock, master padlock. So you can, you can bump master padlocks as well? Theoretically. Is it, oh, okay, interesting. I'll, yeah. I'll ask you more about not, that. <laughs> yeah, not all locks are gonna be as easy as others, but it's possible with a little bit of practice. Okay. You might get them. Interesting, and this this one looks like those ones that you always say do not duplicate for like commercial institutions. Right, that looks like a commercial removable core key, which, uh, you yeah. know, Gotta give it a shot. <laughs> it's possible. Right. Well, speaking of giving it a shot, this is what I have. This is the actual key that goes in, right? And so we put it in. And I only practice a little bit, so I'm probably gonna screw this up and look like a big dumb dummy. But I noticed that there was a couple of different, and I guess these are all branded. Can you tell by the shape of the key? How do you know which key to put in? Um, if it goes in the lock, that's that's that should do it. Okay, so I guess there's different grooves, and so like this one doesn't go in, but this one does go in, and the way I learned was that you put the key all the way in, and then you pull it one notch out, mm -hmm. and then you just give it the slightest bit of torque to the right. Like, like you don't want to push it too hard or it won't go anywhere, but if you just barely put it to the right, and then give it a whack, then it should work, right? Yeah, you're pushing it back in. Okay. And that's snapping all the pins simultaneously with the little bumps left over. Right. And shooting them up, and that, that will create that jump. I guess this is not the quietest way to open a lock. It only takes me. There we go, just like that. And so this is one, this is a case where for eight bucks I was able to get a whole set of them. But then I found out that you can actually make your own bump key and we, we took a, a different key, in this case one for a different, completely different lock. But even though the, the keys, the pins weren't right, it would fit inside. And I guess all we did was take a file and file down all the grooves, all the, the spacing, spacing in the depths. And then we just sort of added a ramp on each side. And I was shocked. I thought for sure some little jackass thing that we had made at home wouldn't possibly work. And again, I got to give credit to my intern, Chad, who did all this. Oh, it's a really right. light touch. Yeah, it's very light. If you give it too much pressure, you're, you bind the, the tumblers and it won't snap up. So now, it's, it's almost like a, a timing issue. You have to give it really light or be able to find that sweet spot where you turn it kind of simultaneously. How hard should you need to hit it? All right, you get a good even. Oh, there we go. Home version works just like that. Now the thing is that each trial, I push it all the way in and then I have to take it out each time. But you were saying there's a way to get around that, right? Well, sometimes you could use a, an O-ring and just wrap on it. Now, is this, is this any kind of special thing you need or just any kind of gasket, any kind any, of rubber gasket? Any O-ring that you can stick on there. Okay. Anything that would create uh, about a 16th of an inch uh, spacing that will compress. And I guess the idea being that when you have the O-ring in there, it sort of automatically pushes the key back out right. after each hit. Right. So in this case, you put on the O-ring. Oh, that's so much easier. Because when you have the O-ring on there, you're able to just keep pulling, twisting to the right. You still have to twist it kind of slightly, but you could just keep hitting it over and over again, and it automatically works. That is scary easy. The advantage is you can manipulate the turning pressure. 
easier. Okay, because you're not trying to do a timing thing or anything. No, you're not trying to do timing anymore. You're just working on concentrating on how much pressure you give to turn it. So it really is. It, it's all in the very light touch. It's in all the in turning. the turning. Holy cow. That is unreal. So at this point, everyone is thinking, there's no way anyone can get in my house. I mean, everything is it's over with. All locks are junk. But I wanted to find uh, out, you said there are bump-proof locks? Yes, there's okay. several. Well, good. Well, let's find out about those. You know what's great about GoDaddy.com? Not only do they feature 99.9% .9 uptime in their hosting, not only do they have 24-7 tech support, but their domains are so ridiculously cheap that you could register one just to annoy your friends. We call it domain smacking, and you've seen it before. Travis Lopes registered SpikyHairDouchebag.com and pointed it at me. Dodd Vickers registered the worst show on the internet.com and pointed it at me. I'm sensing a theme here. But the important thing is, if you want to get cheap domains for less than seven and a half dollars and get them forwarded to anywhere you want absolutely free, make sure to use the new code, new code SCAM10 at checkout. Not only will that get you the domain for $7.49, it'll be keeping scam school in business and yourself swimming in free drinks. All right, now before we find out which locks are bump proof, I, I know everyone at home wants to know if they don't want to spend the eight bucks, if they don't want to order something online, how can they actually just make their own key right at home? Well, depending on the brand lock you want to bump open, um, you would first need a blank. Now, if you can't get a blank, uh, most, most places won't sell you a blank. Really? No. Like, do people come to the shop and they want to buy blanks? We don't. We don't sell blanks. Okay. Unless it's a reputable source. Okay. Because um, who knows what they're going to do with them? Right. Um, there's other things other than bumping you can do with them that you uh, don't want to sell blanks. Of course. So, you can always just get a copy of your key. Okay. Right. So, assuming this is your copy. Right. Um, what you want to do is take a file and file them all down to the deepest part, which is usually the first the beginning of the milling. What kind of file do we want? Um, you'd want to use a round file. Okay. And what's really important is when you're creating a bump key is that you try to keep them exactly aligned where they are, the positioning, the, what, what we call the spacing. Okay. If the spacing is off and one of these bumps is over too far and one's over one way, it's not going to bump all the tumblers at, at the, the same, same time. time. So right. your bump key is not going to be as effective okay. or maybe not work at all. Right. And then um, you want to keep them all exactly the same as much as you can. Okay. So that's that's the trick of now making... Now how important is the, is the diagonal of the slope? Uh, if, if they look more like little rounded teeth, is that not going to work as well? As long as that they're all as symmetrical as you can get them, they're going to they're gonna probably work. Okay. But if it's really sloppy and they're all different, they're kind of one straighter, one more grounded, it's, it's probably not going to be as effective. So like in this case, this one worked, although it wasn't quite as nice as the machined one. Right. But this one we just did, uh, like you said, we just tried to make them as evenly spaced as possible. We filed it all the way down to the base of the groove. Which you experienced the other key. The other key much better, better, better. Much better, yeah. That was cut on a machine. Especially with the O-ring, yeah. Well, cool. So, uh, so again, as long as it's the same manufacturer, I, I guess, does it have to be the same manufacturer? The key, How do you tell? the key has to go in. As long as it fits in, you're as totally As long good. as it fits in. And the industry standard is a five-pin key. So there's there's five cuts. Okay, so, now, so commercial, five cuts down. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I see. five positions. Now, commercial, you could run into six. Okay. So if it's a commercial, a condos or something, it's possible you could have a six. But again, it's the same principle. Same principle. So Got if it. you're going to go get a copy of your key because it fits in another lock that you want to practice on, if it's a commercial lock, you may never get it because it might be a six. You don't know it. Just because right. it fits doesn't mean that it's not six chambers. Okay. Interesting. Right. Interesting. So that's one thing to keep an eye on. All right. So take an old key that fits in your lock, file it down just like that and... Uh, keep it as close as you can. Just start, it. just start playing with it. Okay, so now that we're all terrified that everyone can break into our house at any time, what, what do I want to get if I don't want to make sure that it's not bumpable? Well, Slage is a common brand and they make high security locks. One is Primus. Okay. They have one, uh, another version called Everest, which is also made by Slage. 
And this is becoming the new industry standard and in a few years or so you'll probably start seeing this more available at Home Depot and such. And what makes it bump proof is they have an extra side milling in the side. Ah. And there's an extra tumbler on the side. There's an extra pin. You there's can one bottom see. tumbler. There's a bottom one that writes on that groove. And, and that is what the bump key will not work on. Very clever. So it's a it's a dual locking cylinder now. There's there's two locking points. Um, with the with the with the Primus, it has a whole bunch of them. Holy crap! Yeah. So there's multiples and there's a sidebar that comes in from the side that uh, allows it to when these all line up, it allows the sidebar to go into the side of the plug and turn it. And then it also has your traditional pins that are bumpable. Okay. But the side ones are not. That's brilliant. So there's this, there's um, Medico, there's a high security lock, which uses uh, what we call bi-axle. And if you look at these these teeth, you'll see that they're they're angled. Oh wow, they are, yeah. left, right. So this is a similar, similar to this, but they've incorporated it into the teeth. So the pins, the tumblers, fit these notches and they twist. Wow. And in the side of each tumbler, there's a there's a cutout. And when all of them are twisted right, at the right depth as well, it allows the sidebar to come in. It's almost the difference between like, this is like a two-dimensional kind of key, and that's like got three-dimensional aspects yeah, to so it. Yeah, so it's kind of complicated. But so if you want a bump-proof lock, you're going to spend how much? Um, this lock in, uh, usually runs about maybe $150. As opposed to like a twenty dollar yeah, piece yeah. of junk like that. Yeah. And um, I mean when you when you feel this and, and you know it's all solid, you can feel the weight of this. Holy cow. And I guess is this like the gold standard right here? This would be more of a commercial. Um, you can get it without a key, so you're not bumping anything. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you yeah. know you're maybe not that's picking the it, you're not yeah. bumping it, you're not doing anything. This is a commercial lock, you'll see this lock off. You know, in a lot of places, the back door, Safeway, any kind of department store uh, across the country, this is a very common, it's called the Trilogy. Awesome. Um, programmable, change the combination, lock people out, time activated, do a lot of neat stuff. Well, I know we're gonna be learning more ways to pick locks, but thank you so much, Justin. That was freaking awesome. All right, Brian, thank you. Guys, I cannot be clear enough. Have a blast, practice on your own doors, but don't go breaking into places you don't belong because it is a crime and you will go to jail. Don't blame us, we don't need the lawsuits. By the way, if you have any success stories or failure stories, you can post them at the boards at revision3.com slash scam school where you can see all of our episodes right back to episode one. If you're doing the Twitter thing, you can follow the show at twitter.com slash scam school or find out when I am in your hometown hosting scam school meetups at twitter.com slash schwood. If you have a suggestion for a future episode of Scam School, write me at brian at revision3.com. And don't forget, we'll be having future episodes where we're going to be learning other ways to pick locks. But until then, join us next week when we get a mathematical proof on exactly why Macs are better than PCs. Just kidding. Macs suck.